Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with New Orleans-based jazz vocalist Megan Stewart. She talks about her newly released 2020 CD, Yesterdays, and how this feels to have it in the world's hands. She hails from a small town in Alabama, and her parents were involved in music. Her paternal grandmother and grandfather both played saxophone in the era of swing and big bands. She took classical piano at an early age, and by grade school, she was playing and singing in the church. From there, she went to the University of Southern Mississippi, fell in love with jazz, and decided to further her education in jazz by moving to its to the birthplace of jazz, New Orleans, and immerse herself in the music and history. So please get to know her and dig this interview, my friends. Megan, thank you for taking a minute out from Neon Jazz today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for calling me. I'm really excited to do this. Your new CD that came out on the 6th of March yesterday has a very robust jazz sound to it. Just It has a very full sound to it. Talk to me a little bit about your artistic vision and how you feel about this CD. My artistic vision at the time was fuzzy. <laughs> I honestly didn't have a plan. I was playing with, uh, with my band pretty regularly in a few other places on the outskirts skirts in New Orleans, but mainly in the city. We kind of had this home in the songs that we were doing and the music and the sound that we created together. Cause, you know, when you play for a long time with people, you kind of create your own sound together. And my bass player was planning on moving to New York. He thought I had would have had years to play with him. And, uh, you know, he came up and said he was going to be moving in about six months. And that was, honestly, that was the plan for the CD. It was locking down that sound that we had at that moment with these incredible musicians that I was singing with. And then from there, it kind of just morphed into performing or recording my favorite songs at the moment that we did. That sounds a little selfish, but I think if, if you record or you put down something that you really love, I don't know, hopefully other people will like it too. Let's get back to the, to the beginnings of your life here. You grew up in a small town in Alabama. Talk to me a little bit about what that was like and how you actually got into jazz. I, I imagine jazz isn't hugely popular in Alabama, but that's, that's the route that you've gone in your life. It was not hugely popular. I think, I mean, you know, growing up in school, in a small school, we had probably less than 400 people in our high school. You know, the popular music was top 40, country, especially being in Alabama. And I think it kind of took me a while to be okay with the fact that I liked other music genres. Because, you know, as a kid, I think most of us want to fit in with everybody. So I think it wasn't until high school that I, uh, after being fun of a few times by some peers for music, which, you know, it's ridiculous. It's all being a kid and growing up. I started becoming comfortable with what I listened to. And um, I loved Broadway. I love show tunes. I grew up listening to um, classical. My parents were both musicians. My grandparents both played uh, saxophone in big bands. So I listened to jazz, mainly under their influences. They would burn me. My granddad had this huge collection of music, um, and it was always alphabetized, and he had a running list of what CD corresponded with what number. And he would burn me CDs, um, a lot of Frank Sinatra, Doris Day. When I finally kind of became comfortable, I was the weird kid that would break out singing Broadway tunes in, like, French class, and uh, I decided, because I loved music so much, I would major in music, and I didn't really, really delve into jazz until probably uh, at the end of college, when I was finishing up with my degree, and for me, it was kind of about finding a family in music. Like, I loved Broadway, so I started doing musicals, um, started doing opera, and then I was friends with this um, fantastic jazz guitar player who's in New Orleans now, Daniel Schroeder, and he uh, was putting together a jazz group to perform in Mississippi and started singing with him, and he kind of sparked the interest for me to delve into it more. You know, I mean, because you know when you meet jazz musicians, they they will listen for hours, will watch YouTube videos, and I mean, this is, yeah, this is before, like, everything before TikTok, before Spotify. So they would just sit for hours and just listen to these musicians that they loved and, and talk about it. And I think it kind of let me realize that it, that's 
acceptable. That's okay. This is a family where you can do that. And I decided to move to New Orleans, just out of nowhere, to uh, learn more, to come to the city and learn from the other musicians here. I'm not sure if that actually answered your question. I think I've had too much coffee to give direct answers. <laughs> no, no, that's good. That's great. So it probably, based on what you said and even on paper, it's probably pretty evident that music has always been your path in life. So yes, it has. So New Orleans, I'm always interested with musicians, especially that moved to New Orleans. They're, you know, and Kansas City is one of those initial cradles of jazz. There, there has to be an energy, a magic, an essence that goes into that city that automatically infuses and adds to what you already have. Yeah, there is. And, no, you know, just like I'm sure Kansas City, no one else has what the musicians there have. But like New Orleans, no one else has what we have. It's. It, I don't know, it's, it's almost like this purposeful, I don't want to say slowness, because that's not the right word, but just kind of r relaxed feeling to the sound and to jazz and to swing. It, yeah, it feels absolutely. good. It feels different. Is being on stage, do you get nervous? Is it a second home? Have you always felt comfortable on stage? Uh, yes and no. Well, you know what? I have always felt comfortable. I was singing, like, probably like at the age of six at church. My mom was a church um, pianist and choir director, so she'd have me come up and sing. Singing on stage I don't think ever made me nervous. I also belly dance, and I'll belly dance in front of, you know, like dozens and dozens of people, and I won't get nervous a single time. I think the part that I do get nervous about is once I'm out of the song and out of that kind of magic um, is – talking to the audience, like coming back as myself, as Megan, and talking to people from them. Performing, singing on stage, I don't really get nervous, but I think it's the trying to share what we're creating as just plain myself, as me. That's what makes me nervous. When you did initially get into jazz in college and you finally kind of sunk into it, what musicians really got you going, got you thinking this is it? The musician that I knew at the time, Daniel Schroeder. Of course, he kind of showed me what, like, tr like love and obsession of jazz could be. But when I really started listening, I became obsessed with uh, Nancy Wilson and Carmen McRae. I've been compared a lot to Blossom Deary. Honestly, when I first listened to her, I didn't like her. And uh, I think it, it took me probably a few albums and a few years of me growing up to realize that she's phenomenal her sound is so special so unique um so yeah she eventually became one of those as well what was the first live jazz show that you saw that really made you think man this is what i want to do Ooh, terrence blanchard and uh poncho sanchez <laughs> you know what i go back um actually terrence blanchard when he was doing his tour with um his album choices we have the song winding road i saw that in mississippi that kind of inspired me. And then a few years later, I saw him in Baton Rouge with, you know, on tour with his latest album. And I think that's the thing that kind of locked it in. So, oh, yeah, I'm on the right path. <laughs> this beautiful trumpet player has just confirmed it for me. <laughs> nice. So what do you like best about being a musician? That's a hard question. <laughs> I think it's the connections that that you can get with with the other musicians on stage, I mean, nothing, you know, like I, I told you, I, I'll belly dance and that's that solo performance. It's hard to feel that connection um, anywhere else. You know, when you get into a song and you're all kind of in the same like mental or musical plane and you're in it together, the feeling that comes out of that. And especially like at some point during playing together, when you open your eyes and the audience is in it too, something about that feeling and that of being connected to, the people that you love, the people you care about, and then complete strangers in the room. It's hard to find that anywhere else. Right on. Like a drug. So, <laughs> yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. So why do you love jazz? There's more freedom with it. That's why I love it. That was a very short answer, but... No, that's yeah. fine. That, that, <laughs> that is always the number one answer. I'm always blown away by all of the eloquent answers that I get every time I ask about that. I, I always get the freedom. It's, it's amazing. Um, so 
everything's going to come down to this. Everyone has a perception of you as a person, your family, your friends, your fans, but you're living your life. Who do you think you are? I have no idea. I, I'm, I don't know. I'm trying to figure that out still because you're right. It's, it's a lot. And before when I was singing and my family would come, you know, from Alabama, they come to New Orleans and see me, which they're very supportive and, and they do often. But at first it was, it always, I felt like it would throw me off because, you know, I was figuring out who I was as, as a musician in New Orleans. And, you know, that's different from who, who I was when I was a kid and when I was growing up and when my family knew me. And, you know, it's different than people I know that my friends here know me as. And it's, it's hard to kind of consolidate all these different people. I don't know. I honestly can't tell you that. I'm still figuring it out. But yep. maybe in a few years when I know, I can call you <laughs> that sounds great. and tell you then. That sounds great. And I got one final question. It's this. If you come to Kansas City, you play off 18 and Vine, what is the show going to be like that you deliver? What are you going to give people that decide to come in and to experience your music? Hopefully that connection that I was talking about. That's what I would love to give them. Where we play these songs that, that feel good, that sound good, that you don't hear performed, that maybe you don't hear on CDs. And we can kind of give them this experience where they hear something new and they also feel that connection to it that we get when we perform it. That's what I'd like to give. Megan, thank you for taking some time out for Neon Jazz. Good luck with the album and your career. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. I really appreciate you calling me. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview where we give you a bit of insight into the finest singers in Alabama, New Orleans, Kansas City, and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Megan for her time, music, and stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.